So can I ask everyone here to have your cell phone on your hands and check your battery charge. How much battery charge do you have right now? And let me tell you something. The second happiest moment of our life, after the moment we find true love, is the moment that our cell phone says, fully charged. <laughs> it just feels so good. You feel ready and good to go. But now, what if I told you that your life is dependent on your battery charge? Your life is at a greater risk as the battery charge goes down. I know this doesn't sound to be true, but this is actually true for millions of patients around the globe who have cardiac pacemaker. Cardiac pacemakers are implantable bioelectronic devices that monitor and regulate your heartbeats. These devices have saved millions of lives around the globe. However, cardiac pacemakers are powered by batteries. And this causes three main problems. The first, those batteries run out of a charge. So the patient has to go through a surgery after five to seven years to replace the battery. This exposes the patients to risk of infection and all the headache that come from any surgery. Actually, there is a patient, his name was Omar. Omar was 11 years old kid. He was happy and full of joy. But when the time comes, he went to the surgery. And unfortunately, complications happened. And Omar lost his life. And when you think about it, the most precious thing on earth, the human life, is lost because the battery charge is not enough? This, this is unfair. This is unfair. So the second problem that's happening from the battery, these batteries are composed of toxic electrode materials and electrolytes, which could be very dangerous if any leakage happened inside the patient's body due to an accident or maybe a bad manufacturing. And the third problem, they are bulky. So they made the whole pacemaker bulky. Actually, 40 to 50% the size of the pacemaker is a battery. To make the pacemaker smaller, we need a smaller battery. And to find solution for these serious problems, this is when my research comes in. My research is focused on developing the alternative, which is called biological supercapacitor. What is a supercapacitor? A supercapacitor is an energy storage device. It's like batteries has a positive electrode and negative electrode. And these electrodes store the energy. And these are separated with a mem membrane. And this membrane is a porous membrane. And it also has an electrolyte. What's electrolyte? Electrolyte is a material that is full of ions. That, and these ions are important when we do a charge and discharge. Without going to the technical details, this is a supercapacitor, but why it's any better? Supercapacitors can be charged in a very short amount of time. It has a high charge rate. Basically, you can charge a supercapacitor to the maximum in a few seconds. And to show you all this, let me do this demonstration. My son loves it. So, this is a simple electrical circuit. An example of a supercapacitor is here, a small device and it's connected to a small lamp, we call it LED or a LED lamp. Now, the, char the device has no charge, so the lamp is off. So let's charge this supercapacitor for just three seconds. So now I disconnected the device, I will connect it to a battery to charge it. And once I connect the other side, let's count to three together. One. Two, three, amazing audience. <laughs> so now, believe it or not, this device now is fully charged. And to show this, let's connect it back to the LED lamp. Once I connect the negative side, now you can see the lamp is on. 
So why this is important? The whole point is we want to harvest the energy from the body. And we want something that can suck up all this energy in very short amount of time. And this is what a supercapacitor do. But now, we want to design a supercapacitor that solves these problems. And this supercapacitor is made from biocompatible components. It's made from our body proteins when it's interlayered with graphene. And this material that we found by accident happened to charge very, very quickly and store a high amount of charge. So we think this material is good. But now, these electrolytes that happen in all the batteries, they are toxic. So we use the blood of the patient himself as an electrolyte. Our blood is full of ions, which make it the perfect electrolyte. The first time I made the device with the blood as an electrolyte, I connected to the lead lamp, and it goes on. This was a moment of joy. I was dancing everywhere in the lab. <laughs> if you saw me this time, you would say, this guy must have discovered electricity. <laughs> but now we know we have a safer device. But we want to make it smaller. So we made the device to be ultra thin. It's actually thinner than the human hair, about 1.1 micron. Not only this, we want to test the device for performance. So we charged and discharged the device for thousands and thousands of cycles. And the performance was maintained. So it's a durable device. This, may, this means that this device could power the cardiac pacemaker for the lifetime of the patient. Now, we want to use this device for all other applications. We want to harvest the energy of the body, our motion, the body heat, using an energy harvester. And this energy harvester is a layer of the device that sends the energy to the supercapacitor. And now the supercapacitor can power all kinds of implantable devices. Not only cardiac pacemaker, gastric stimulators, deep brain stimulators, and all kinds of implantable biosensors. Devices like this could make a difference. We actually use the device to power a portable cancer biosensor that can detect three cancer biomarkers all in the same time, in a very short amount of time, in a cost less than a dollar and a half. Devices like this could be a game changer. And now, let's make sure that all the hearts, like Omar's, never run out of charge. Thank you.